Hey everyone, and welcome to the wood engraved logo tutorial. Learn how to create these striking logo mockups that have been engraved into wood using Adobe Photoshop. Hi, I'm Jonathan Lamb from Envato Tuts Plus, and in this video, we'll take you through step by step on how to create these photorealistic designs. Taking advantage of Photoshop's smart objects, multiple layer styles, and assets from Envato Elements. So before we begin, make sure to check out Envato Elements. With one subscription, you'll have unlimited access to assets such as the ones we'll be showcasing in this video. Millions of creative digital assets with a simple commercial licensing, and you can cancel at any time. Subscribe now with the link in the description below. So let's start by going over what assets we'll need to complete this tutorial. First, we'll need a wooden texture. You can find a large selection at Envato Elements. Any high-res wooden texture will do. Next, we'll need a perspective image. You can find a link to this one in the description below. And then we'll need to use a logo for our mock-up. You can use your own logo design or if you want to follow along, we'll be using this badge and logo pack from Envato Elements. Again, a link to this will be in the description below. Now back in Photoshop, you'll see that we've imported two of our images into Photoshop. So you can see them in the layers panel here, our wooden background image, and on top of that, the perspective image. Make sure that you've set a foreground color. So we've chosen a bright yellow here. And we're going to choose the rectangle tool, click on our canvas, and let's type in one, two, six, seven, and a height of eight, one, four. Once you've done that, click OK, and you'll see we've created a bright yellow rectangle here. Now, once we've done that, let's go ahead and double click on our rectangle layer, and we want to rename this smart object, like so. And then once we've done that, let's go to the top menu here and click on layer and then select smart objects and convert to smart object like that. Excellent. Now we want to transform this. So to do that, go to edit and then select transform. And we want to distort it. So select distort here and using the mouse, let's click and drag the four corners so that they match up with our perspective image below it here. So you can see just clicking and dragging so that it matches the corners of the black rectangle like that. And then once you've finished that, Go ahead and click on the tick button here to apply it. Excellent. So now we don't need this perspective layer anymore. So we can either delete it or hide it like so. And then we want to go ahead and get our logo image. So you see we've imported our logo image into Photoshop here. So let's go ahead and select that. Press Control C to copy it. Go back to our main document. And let's go ahead and double click on this smart object here to go inside it. So once we've clicked on the OK button, this will open the content of the smart object in a new window of Photoshop. Here you can make any changes you like and once you're satisfied, all you need to do is save the file and the Photoshop smart object will be updated when you return to the main document. Now in the layers panel here, let's go ahead and deactivate the visibility of the yellow smart object. And we want to go ahead and paste in our logo like so by pressing Control and V. Now once you've pasted in your logo, we want to resize and reposition it. So press Control T to resize this. And up here, we can go ahead and change the values of some of these. So in the X position here, let's go ahead and change this to 633.5. 
and for the y value let's go ahead and change this to 406.5 just to make sure that our position for the logo is centralized and over here we can go ahead and change the size of our logo by clicking and dragging our mouse button like that. So we can go ahead and make it a little bit larger if we want, just to fill out the rectangle. And then once you're happy with that, again, just go ahead and click on the tick button. Now, once you're done editing your logo inside the smart object, all you need to do is press file and save to make sure that that's saved close it and then head back into your main document and you'll see that the smart object has now updated with the latest changes that we made awesome now let's go ahead and engrave the badge into the wood let's start by setting the fill of the smart object to zero percent like so and then we want to duplicate this smart object at least five times by going to the top menu bar here and then going to layer, new. And from here, we want to go to layer via copy. So control J on the keyboard. So let's do this another five times. So press control J on the keyboard four more times like so. So we've created five different copies of this layer and then we want to select all five of these layers and group them up into a new group and let's rename this group effects and now let's open this group up and we want to name each of these by a number so effect one and so on, so effect two, effect three, effect four, and finally effect five. Excellent. And now click and drag our smart object layer on top. And from now on, when we need to replace our logo in the smart object, we'll use this particular layer by double clicking on it and editing the content inside. Now let's start adding some layer styles to the effect five layer here. So let's open up layer styles by right clicking on this and going to blending options. And then in this window here, we want to add bevel and emboss. So just check the bevel and emboss option here and you'll see straight away that our logo has started to appear in our document. Now we want to put the technique as smooth, make sure the style is kept at inner bevel. The depth will place it at 113% with the direction put at up and we want the size to be two, soften at zero and the angle at 30 with an altitude at 30. And over here, we want to change the contour by clicking on this arrow button here. And we want to look for a specific one which is this one on the bottom left called rounded shape. So select that and then select this button here, anti-aliased. Once you've done that, set the highlight mode to lighter color. And we want to make sure that the color is set to pure white, which is F like so. And then we want to put the opacity to 50%. Make sure that the shadow mode is set to overlay and that we have a pure black selected. And over here, we want the opacity to be 80%. Now let's add an inner shadow effect by selecting it. And we want to set the blend mode here 
to multiply, making sure that we have a pure black selected like so. And then we want to set the opacity here to 80%. We want to set the angle to 105 and the distance here to four, leaving the rest at zero. And then here we want to change the contour again. And let's go ahead and choose this one here, which is half round. And again, check the anti-aliased checkbox here. Now we want to make a new satin effect. So select satin. And then from here, we want to set the blend mode to soft light, which is down over here. And we want to change the color to a different color, which is 3B, 2B, 2, 5. Click OK when you've done that. And then we want to set the opacity to 100 and then the angle to 120. We want to set the distance to 1 and the size to 0. Now over here, we want to change the contour again. And again, we want to choose this one here, which is half round. And this time, let's uncheck anti-aliased and select invert. Awesome. Now let's add a new drop shadow effect, which is down here. So click on that. And then we want to set the color of our drop shadow to pure white like that. And from here, we want to set this to overlay. So our blend mode is now set to overlay. And then over here, we want the opacity to be set at 80%. And we want the angle to be set at 105. And over here, the distance, we want that to be set to two. And everything else here, so spread and size, is set to zero. Over here, we want the contour to be at the default, which is this straight diagonal line here called linear. And then once you've done this, click OK. And now we'll add some layer styles to the effect for layer. So right click on this, go to blending options. And from here, we want to add an inner shadow effect. So click on inner shadow and set the blend mode color to pure black. And now we want to set the blend mode to multiply, set the opacity to 80 and set the angle to 105. And this time we want to set the distance to six pixels. Now we want to set the contour to linear like so. And then from here, we want to add a new pattern overlay. So click on pattern overlay. And from here, we want to set the options to overlay as our blend mode, set the opacity to 44, and we want to choose a pattern to texturize our wooden logo. So let's click on the pattern box here, and let's select one of these patterns here, like that. And then we want to scale this down, just play about with the scale until you find something that you like. So let's go ahead and scale this to something like 50%. And then we want to lower the opacity down as well, like so. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and add a new drop shadow effect. So go to drop shadow, and then we want to set the blend mode to screen, choose a new color here. So this color is going to be B07555. Let's change the opacity here to 33, change the angle to 105, and we want to change the distance here to one, like so. Everything else we can leave as default and then press OK. Now we want to add a layer style to the effect three layer. So again, right click, blending options, and we want to add an inner shadow here. So select inner shadow and set the blend mode color here to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, which is pure black. Then we want to set the opacity to 80, the angle at 105, 
the distance to 8 and the size here to 1, like that. Click OK. And now let's move on to Effect 2. Let's right click on the Effect 2 layer, go to Blending Options. And here we want to go to Inner Shadow, set the Blend Mode color here again to Pure Black. And here we want to set the angle at 105, the opacity to 80, the distance here we want at 10 pixels, the size at 1, and then the rest as default. Click OK. And then finally, let's go to Effect 1. Go to Blending Options. And here we want to go to the Inner Shadow again. Set the Blend Mode color to Pure Black. And here we want to set the Opacity at 80, Angle at 105, the Distance at 12. And here we want to set the Contour to something that looks like this. So this is the Rounded Steps. So click on that. And now finally, we want to add a Gradient Overlay. So click on that. And we want to set the Blend Mode here to Soft Light. And the Opacity here to 67. And then we're just going to play about with the gradient options here. So we're setting this to a standard gradient. And we're just going to darken up our logo here a little bit, like so. And just change the color to a darker shade of gray. Then once you're happy with the way that it looks, we can go ahead and click on the OK button. Set the angle here to 135. And here we want to make sure that the dark color is on the left. So uncheck reverse. So you can see that the light is coming from the left to the right. And over here we want to set the scale to 100. Excellent. So that's it for this video. Feel free to use your own logos and textures for this project. And if you liked this video and would like to see more, go ahead and click on the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of any new and inspiring videos. If you're looking to learn even more, check out some of the other tutorials in this channel. Have fun and I'll see you next time on Tuts Plus.